the Mix Mornings and More podcast with Steph. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Hello, hello, and welcome to Wednesday. We are halfway through the week, and it is snowing a whole bunch out there. It's the perfect kind of snow to make a snowman or have a snowball fight, Um, but it's not the perfect kind to use your wipers to get it off your windshield. You definitely need to use your snow brush. And the roads, a little bit slippery. It's, It's hard to... Hard to get down Beacon Hill in a little bit. Kind of slick out there. So just make sure you're giving yourself extra time today and everybody arrives safely where they're headed. I cleaned out my freezer the other day and some of the more freezer burnt unrecognizables found their way to the garbage. A couple days later, I found a leaking mess in the bottom of the garbage bin and got to work soaking the can to clean up whatever it was that melted and pooled in there. Gross is an understatement here. (laughs) Well, my husband gets home from work, sees my project, and he gets a little curious. And as he's looking in with his disgusted face, he knocks the book I just finished reading off the counter into the soapy, stinky garbage can water. I mean, the book was called Meet Me at the Lake, but I don't think that's the kind of swim the author had in mind. People Magazine has dropped their most read and talked about issue, the one where they crown the sexiest man alive. Now, in previous years, we've seen George Clooney, John Legend. Last year, it was Chris Evans. But finally, Grey's Anatomy fans have known it since 2005 when McDreamy walked on screen. Derek Shepard, a.k.a. Patrick Dempsey, has finally been crowned the sexiest man alive. So what went through his mind when he first heard the news? I was completely shocked. And then I laughed and I was like, you're kidding me. This is a joke, right? I've been the bridesmaid for people's sexiest man alive uh, 10 times. Now I get the big picture, not the little picture that's on the side. (laughs) Congratulations, Dr. Shepard. If you're someone who uses food delivery apps, depending on your generosity or lack thereof, uh, you could be waiting longer. Now, I can't tell if Dashers could see their tips before this pilot program came into effect. But if you go to order and you don't add a tip, a little prompt will come up saying orders with no tip may take longer to deliver. Are you sure you want to continue? Dashers can pick and choose which orders they want to do. And orders that take longer to be accepted by Dashers tend to result in slower delivery. And this might just be DoorDash revealing to non-tippers why their delivery always takes so long. Or it might be a new thing where they're giving drivers a leg up on knowing what they're going to make before they drive across town with your dinner. Now, I waitressed for eight years, and when someone didn't tip, it was rather shocking. Mainly because I couldn't see anything wrong with the superior service I provided them. (laughs) And I would lay awake at night wondering what I did to offend them. But the ones that always surprised me the most were guests who would get amazing service and tell you at the end that out of principle, they don't ever tip. And then they'd go into a big explanation that the restaurant should pay their servers enough that the patron didn't have to tip. And sure, I agree, but you're not tipping isn't hurting the restaurant tonight, you know? Just an early morning PSA for you. If you're one of those people who save up your coffee cards to use at a later time, The later time is running out. I'm talking about the McDonald's ones that used to come with a sticker and a punch out card on the side of the cup. They stopped making them over a year ago, but they're going to stop accepting them December 31st. So at the end of 2023, they'll be worthless. Now, I am one of those people. I still have about 20 left and there's five in one wallet and four on my nightstand and a couple in my gym mag. But on Sunday, I found one on the floor of my car. Excitement ensued when I realized all seven of the stickers were on the card. Yes. Also on the card was spilled but dry coffee and definitely more than one muddy boot print. I wonder what the attendants think when they take these cards and it looks like that and it's a little bit thicker than it should be from all of the extra things on it. Do they think I found the cheapest person alive? Well, they might have. (laughs) Whatever. I got my free coffee. It was delicious. The floor of my car is a little less cluttered. It's a win-win in my books. I've been re-watching Friends, and we watched the one where Chandler challenges Ross to name all 50 states in six minutes. And Ross insists he can do it, but it seems he's always short on one. And so I, of course, challenged my American husband. Can you do it? And less than six minutes later, he had all 50 no repeats. And he said, of course I can. Don't you know the 50 states song? And I thought, I've heard this conversation before, but I think Taylor Swift was the one having it. And sure enough. Did you not sing the state song? Mm Mm-mm. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut. 
Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Dakota, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. Did you not know that song? No. It's like my favorite song. No. <laughs> 50 states, she did that in 45 seconds. Thanks, Taylor. Definitely not as catchy as your other tunes, but I'm sure there's a whole host of Swifties who know all 50 states because of you. Today is the final day to name that plow, and it's a perfect day to submit your answers because with all the snow, I know you'll be thinking about it. The RMWB are naming six of their snow plow fleet with your help, and the six chosen winners will each get a home hardware gift card. Now, I have some ideas. Grandma Grater and Flurry Feet are my faves, but what about the Asphalt Finder or Detective Asphalt, you know, because they're like really getting down to the pavement, or... Percy Plow. That's just because it starts with a P. Ooh, maybe I like Peter Plow better. <laughs> Buffalo Blizz for like Wood Buffalo and Blizzard. If I have to explain them, does that make them bad names? <laughs> Whatever. Go to rmwb.ca slash name dash that dash plow to get your votes in. Entertainment to music and anything in between, this is The Buzz. Brought to you by Foy Medi Spa. The official trailer just dropped for Mean Girls the Musical. It's coming to theaters January 12th and billed as a twist from Tina Fey. Lots of great jokes in the trailer, but oddly, no musical numbers. So I guess we'll add that to the long list of reasons I'm excited to see this. Regina George singing? So fetch. And it's official, McDreamy, a.k.a. Dr. Derek Shepard, the brain surgeon, and known in real life as Patrick Dempsey, has been named People's Sexiest Man Alive. When they called to tell him, he said he laughed out loud, that he's been in the runner-up list 10 times, specifically calling himself a bridesmaid. Well, you know what they say, always a bridesmaid, finally a bride? <laughs> Congrats on being born with great hair, Derek. Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.